I know, it's a big mess. But I've decided I'm not leaving the shop today until I figure out how to get my circular logo to look like a circle on my 20 ounce tumbler. Today on Laser Nug. So I wanna to try to figure out what the correct adjustment or calculation is to try to get a circular logo to look circular on a tumbler. And at least through the on and off testing I've been doing between other things over the last month, month and a half, I've recognized that the taper of the tumbler, the length of your design or the size of your image all kind of play a factor into what the adjustment is because I don't think, or at least I haven't been able to determine that one type of adjustment fits any size logo on any type of tumbler, whether they have a taper to them or not. Just recently, you folks that use Lightburn know that there's a new feature called Taper Warp, and I thought that might help out, but at least from my initial test, it doesn't appear to help with the visual or the optics of a circular logo or circular pattern or design. I do believe it does help a bit in helping the design look more natural to the eye based on the taper, but not necessarily on the width or around the concave nature of the tumbler. So we're gonna go into a few of those, and then hopefully before the sun sets, I'll have figured out what the best adjustment or way to adjust that logo is on at least the 20 ounce that I sell. I think the best way to start today is I just wanted to provide you some information for consideration as we go forward with this. And hopefully this information is gonna help you out in your business or at least in your shop. The first consideration is that not all tumblers are created equal. So the first thing I wanted to consider today is the taper warp function. There's very little information or support questions yet on this new feature, but the base instructions tell you on Lightburn's website that you're gonna highlight your design, go down, click on taper warp, and it wants three dimensions. And in this case, I'm just gonna leave it set as referenced from the top of the object. It doesn't tell you to provide the dimensions of your design. It says to provide those dimensions relative to the object itself. It wants the diameter at the top of the object, the bottom of the object, and then it wants the length of the object. And then it takes whatever calculations it does and manipulates your design to, I guess, offset or consider the taper of that mug. But as many of you know, not all mugs are a straight taper and I wanted to show you a few differences. Most tumblers don't have a straight line taper to them at all. In fact, I'll just show you some of the common ones, many of which you probably sell right now. If I just take this square, very simple square, and I'll take a standard 18 ounce, and you'll notice that this one has a straight line taper right from the top of the tumbler right to the bottom. And if you look at some of these skinny tumblers, this one in itself should have no taper. But now take a look at the Yeti. The Yeti, you should be able to see, has a taper from about the line where it says Rambler. It tapers down to the bottom of the tumbler. But look what happens at the top. It actually, the diameter begins to shrink. Pretty standard mug you can get from Michaels and these popular wine coolers. That's a bit of a twist, eh? Tapers from the very top to about three quarters of the way down to the belly of the tumbler, so to speak, and then it has an immediate taper back into the bottom. And then your classic travel mug. So I think it's safe to say, although I haven't confirmed this yet, that it's not the sizing or the dimensions relative to the tumbler that will provide you a more accurate taper. It's what's relative to your design area. For example, if I take this standard wine cooler and provide the dimensions at the top and at the bottom and this length, I'm pretty sure that whatever calculations go on in Lightburn, it's not gonna know that it's got a big belly in the middle. And I don't plan, unless I'm using a four inch lens, I don't plan on wrapping right to the bottom. I'm probably gonna wanna give them these dimensions here because that's probably where I'm gonna put my design. And I think that would provide a more accurate determination of what the applicable or usable taper is. 
Similarly, if you look at the travel mug, same kind of thing happens. Unless you're wrapping all the way down the mug, you're going to want to give them this area. Diameter here, diameter here, and that engrave area. So that it can calculate this taper. It's just my thoughts. I know Robert at Computer Creations mentioned very similar thoughts. I think he kind of agrees with that as well. But I believe that when you're using the taper warp, you want to use the area of design, not the full tumbler. The second thing is I've watched a number of different videos and a lot of folks, some folks say that you take the design, take the diameter of the, the tumbler, add uh, one tenth, I guess it is, of that diameter to the width of your logo and it should come out perfectly circular. Uh, a few folks have suggested you just simply always add 10% to the width. Some say 7%. At the end of the day, I don't think that 10% or 7% to every logo regardless of the diameter or the lack of taper or taper of a cup is going to work the same every time. I think the best thing to do is just start. And I think what I will do is I'll start with 10%. See what that looks like. We're going to begin our testing on one of these straight skinny tumblers just because I have one and they were really cheap. <laughs> because these skinny tumblers don't actually have a, a, any type of a taper to them, these are same diameter at the top as they are the bottom. I'm not going to use taper warp for this first set of tests. If we go into light burn, you'll see that I've got my logo design. I've verified that this is in fact an exact circle, notwithstanding the letters that stick out at the bottom on the left and the right. I'm going to come down into my library on the bottom right, and I'm going to look for my powder coat settings. And I'm going to check on dog bowls because I think that's the one I want to use. Powder coat. I come up, I check to make sure my fill layer is highlighted, and I'm going to come here to the right hand side under material and click assign. Okay, and I'm checking and that's changed my settings. I'm in good shape. I'm going to grab my logo and I want to make it two inches. We're just going to take the width, make that two inches. That's up at the top. That has changed my height. And the reason why you don't see it perfectly two by two is because of the letters that stick out, just so you know. So what I want to do is I'm going to change my width. So I'm going to uncheck my lock. I'm going to come here and I'm going to put 110% in for my width. And you'll see that stretch the logo a bit. Now I'm going to lock it again. I also want to rotate this 90 degrees because I'm going to be putting it on the rotary. And I also want to come down here to the bottom, click on laser. I want to move my user origin to the middle right. I just prefer it there when I'm doing rotary. And I'm going to input all of my rotary settings and send it to the bolt. Okay, I went a little further. I just didn't want to carry you guys all the way through it. It'd be a long video. But here's what I've done. This was the two inch logo. And we started off by stretching it with 10% additional width. That's the top. Then I went back, I redid it with 5% additional to the width. And then I did it with no stretch. It's two by two. And surprisingly, both the boss inside and myself believe that that looks a little stretched. That looks stretched, but not so much so. But that, with no additional width, looks perfect. Or about as close to a perfect circle as you're going to get. So then I decided, what if I put a 3-inch logo on this? Very different results. That's a 3-inch with 10% stretch. And that's a three inch with 5%. And I, I will have to admit, we both agreed that that's reasonably circular, but you can sort of tell it's a little stretched. It doesn't quite look totally symmetrical. This one with the 5% looks closer to a circle, but it does kind of look a little bit like it's squished in a bit, just a tiny bit. In all fairness, if I was to use this 5% stretch, I'd be fine with it. 
but it appears to me that somewhere between five and 10% on this type of tumbler seems to be the sweet spot for a three inch logo. This is a 2.95 diameter skinny cup. So I hope that's helpful to you good folks. Again, no taper warp because there's no taper to this tumbler whatsoever. But here's another interesting fun fact. Do you remember this guy? <laughs> well, this logo is one and a half inches symmetrical circle. No extension, no additional width, didn't increase the width at all, but notice how squished it looks. So I can kind of conclude from this observation that when you've got a two inch circle or logo, you don't need to add any width to it because at least from our eyes, this looks like the best result. The most circular shaped to the visible eye. If you've got something closer to a three inch, you're going to want to add somewhere around 5 to 7%. But if your logo is much smaller than 2, you're going to need to add width again. It's almost like 2 is like a sweet spot for this 2.95 diameter tumbler. Hope that's helpful. Second up, standard 20 ounce. It's a ring neck polar camel tumbler. This one has a 3.4 inch diameter top on it and we're going to use taper warp and we're also going to test different stretched widths on my logo. However, I'm not going to measure the top diameter and bottom. I'm going to measure it from where my design is going to sit. So I'm going to take my diameter for the top measurement in the taper warp right around here about a quarter inch below the ring neck and I'm going to take the diameter here about a quarter to a half inch above the highest ring and then I'm going to measure my length between the two instead of using the object. Let's see what kind of results we get. So I'm going to grab my two inch design. I'm going to bring it down. We're going to stretch this one by 10%. So I'm going to come up here to the top. I've got two inch by 1.75. That's because of the extended letters. I'm going to unlock and I'm going to put 110% in here. And we're going to enter and you'll see the logo stretched. Now I'm going to lock it again just so I don't mess it up. I'm going to come back down here. This is the two inch logo at a 10% stretch. Got it. Before I go ahead and group this, I want to highlight the logo itself. I'm going to head up here to laser tools and I am going to go to the bottom to taper warp. And I already have my measurements, so I know in millimeters, by the way, the top diameter, which is measured just below the ring neck, not at the very top of the tumbler, is 87.5 millimeters. I know that the length of my engrave area is 91. And I know that the bottom of my engrave area is 79.5. And now that should have been warped. Now that I've done that, I want to highlight everything. I want to go up and group it. Then I'm going to press my period so I can spin it sideways. There we go. And before I send it to the bolt, I need to change it one setting. So I'll come up here to the right to my rotary setting. I'm going to click on that. So I'm going to just change this to 3.46. That changes my circumference. I'm on x-axis. I enabled the rotary. It's on check. I'm good. I click OK. And now I'm going to send it to the bolt. So here's our results. This is a two inch round logo. That's going to give you your 10%. In my view, it looks a little stretched. There's your 5%. And there's your 0%. In our view, me and the boss, the 0% is not bad, but it's still, when you look at it, does kind of have a bit of an oblong shape vertically, but it's pretty close to a circle. Your 10%, in our view, looks too stretched. It just does. But the 5% is much closer to a circle. I think when I run these again at some point, I'm just going to try around 3% because this is pretty close and certainly in our view closer than the zero. 
but I think just a little less stretch on it, maybe a 3%, try that, and I think we're in good shape for a two inch logo. The three inch. There's your 10%. Your 5%. And there's your zero. And again, zero definitely looks kind of egg-shaped. Uh, wouldn't do the zero. The 10% is actually doesn't look too bad. It still looks a little stretched though. 5% I think is pretty much bang on. However, I think if I was gonna run this, I would probably increase it to maybe six, possibly 7%. And then I think you're gonna get a good result. So hey, there's still a little daylight. Let's get this done today. 12 ounce wine coolers. So again, for reference, when I use the taper warp function, I'm gonna measure the top diameter right around here, a little more around a quarter of an inch below the ring neck. And because this is the first tumbler we're testing that actually tapers outward, I'm gonna catch the maximum diameter here at the bottom of the belly of this wine cooler. Sorry, that might be easier for you. I'm gonna catch it right here. That's gonna be my bottom diameter. And then my engravable area, once again, will be the length that I install into the taper warp or I input into it. Okay, getting on summer. So these wine tumblers should get pretty popular. I did my two inch on the wine tumbler. That's your 10% stretch on the width. That's your 5%. And then your zero. So here at the homestead, 10% once again, definitely looks stretched, not helping at all. 5% in my view is pretty much bang on a circle. That looks great. And the zero, once again, with no additional width at all, looks, it's pretty close, but it still has that bit of a squish from side to side, almost like it's oblong. So I'd say for sure the 5% is a winner. Maybe 3%, somewhere in the middle, if you're not sure the 5% is the right one for you. And that's on a two inch logo. I couldn't get the three inch on only because the belly on this tumbler is right at about three, little over, little under three inches. I think it was 2.7 inches. So what I did is I created a 2.5 logo and I've just got the numbers right on the crest of the belly. So at a 2.5, there's your 10% add and your 5%. And there's your zero. So interesting outcome here. The zero actually almost circular. Looks really good, but still got that little bit of a squish on the side, so to speak. Once again, I think the 5% is bang on, bang on. So anywhere around that 5% add to the width is gonna help you. Once again, 10% way too stretched, I think. So hey, still light out. <laughs> and I got a big mess to clean up. Any of you guys gonna stick around and help me out? I didn't think so. So hey, to wrap up, I just wanna leave you with a few thoughts and observations after the testing today. Several channels, as well as a few folks in the comments had told me that when they do tumblers, they just add 10%. And Maybe that means either A, 10% is that average they just put on every tumbler and it, they're generally happy with the outcome, or B, it's possible that the taper work does kind of help with the sizing of those circular designs. Probably would have been a good test today just to do one with the taper warp and one without. But I think now that I have it in Lightburn, I'm gonna use it all the time, unless of course, I've got the long skinny with no taper. Second thing, I think we've kind of proven today that even with the taper warp, one size doesn't fit all. 
it all depends on the diameter of the taper or the the extreme or the slope of the taper and it, whatever other factors depends on how much you want to stretch or not stretch that logo or add width to it before you you burn your tumbler also a few of you folks had asked in the past this is all i use dawn power wash i know it's a little more expensive but it comes off quick gets that greasy or that residue right off and works 99 percent of the time I very seldom ever have to pull out a magic eraser to get a tough spot out. Almost every mug comes out. A little bit of water, soft sponge in that power wash, and it's done. Before I forget, you good folks that follow the channel may recall about two months ago, I put out a quick shot video and I provided you the settings I was using for dog bowls and other powder coated cylinders like tumblers. Since then, I've worked through a lot more. I've been able to increase the speed, which decreases my production time and I've had to change some of the values so if you've got a second I'll give them to you right now. I'm now running at 600 millimeters per second, max power at 70 and min power at 60. I also have an interval of 0 0.042. I had to make some of those changes because I noticed on some of the tumblers or some of the products I used to have my min and max power the same and every once in a while I'd find kind of scorch marks or burn marks at the edge of the design. I guess where the laser shut off, turned around and came back. So I changed it and I dropped my min power relative to my max power and I find that virtually doesn't happen anymore. So I think that's been pretty helpful. I also increased my LPI as you probably noticed. Another related point. Powder coated tumblers are not created equal. Depending on who your manufacturer is, you're going to find that the powder coat is either not as thick or as thicker than others. You'll recall a few minutes back at the beginning of this video, I showed you the laser at work on this teal tumbler. You might have noticed it was flaring up a lot. Well, it doesn't flare up on the Polar Camels or the Yetis or the No Names, but it flared up on this one. So just something to be mindful of. The settings that you use for one manufacturer may not be the same settings you need for the other. So when you're inputting your values into your library, you may want to make separate entries based on manufacturer. So I think that wraps it up. I hope it's been helpful, especially if you're new to lasers or you just got your bolt. Good luck with your products and your sales. Have a great week with your families. Please be kind to one another. And I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.